Good morning. Marcus with Render Reclamation Insurance. Today I want to begin philosophically, if you will, about a question that may come across in life with everyone. Why are we here? Like, exactly why are we here? Is a life campaign for most, and it should be, a, a quest of truth and involvement in a lot of things. So when I ask that, why are we here? It goes upon my point uh, prior about the reading. Because you become more mindful of things as you acquire more knowledge. And what I, I mean by acquiring more knowledge as far as it pertaining to what I'm discussing is I'm trying to give uh, people enriching, enriching uh, instruments that they can help other people and help themselves. Planting a tree, it could be a fruit tree, it could be a shade tree, it could be a show tree. There's a lot of different trees. It could be a shrub. There's a lot of different things you can plant in the ground that will be fruitful. Firewood, you never know when you need this. You never know, your electricity could go and all you have is some kindling and some flint or whatever the case is to start a fire. So now you know how to properly start a fire so you don't put yourself in liability. Why are we here? I began to ask that question before I even embarked on insurance. Before I was in insurance, I was a debt collector for a long time and I collected on a lot of different types of debt whether it be medical, student loan, car, whatever, you name it. I collect on a lot. And you hear a lot of different emotion uh, throughout that process. And you steal yourself uh, through that process. Because when I started, the laws were a lot loose, uh, gray, if you will. And you could do a lot more things which is very, very inappropriate because now the laws are very uh, regimental to the way that you cannot um, just be uh, flipping with people. Because I used to play games, pretending I was a police officer or call people at work. Uh, this is like when it, I first started, when there wasn't uh, really a FDCPA compliance and people just wanted to do whatever they wanted to do to get money. And that's exactly what it was about. It was just getting money and they didn't care. Um, and then that's when people were like, hey, we need to help people and be more consumer uh, centric. So you're going to burn out unless you're on the top of the food chain in that industry with all due respect to it, because it is a necessary industry. There's always going to be uh, debt. Um, but you're going to burn out eventually if you're on the front lines of that. You're going to burn out. So that progressed to sales. And I enjoyed sales because I could be myself. I could uh, make people happy. Um, I could laugh. Even though you could laugh being a collector, but it, no one wants to laugh when, when they're paying a debt. I'm like That's inappropriate. You know, now if you're... They're calling about like, hey, my credit's good. You know, I'm glad I took care of that. And then you can celebrate with them in an appropriate uh, measure. So when I was doing car sales, I, I loved it, you know, but there was a catch to that. The demographic that I was, uh, was in was subprime and with all respects to the uh, that market, you have to have challenge credit, uh, credit to be in that market, and you're not paying uh, prices that someone with prime um, capabilities could uh, will be paying. And 
there were times where the product that I was representing and sold to a person uh, didn't necessarily, and it happens. If you sell a lot of products, things happen. You know, it's just, it's a numbers game. But now if it's an, an, an intentional, uh, persistent uh, thing, then that's that's something in, in, in itself. But it, things happen. So when this would happen, when... Uh, someone would get a product that they uh, did not uh, think was satisfactory. I would receive the brunt of this at the stores, uh, at the gas station, because I live in a in an area where you're easily accessible. You can't just hide some way in the hills or in a cave somewhere. You have to go out and be around the community. It's a community driven area, uh, very uh, proactive area where I live at. Um, so get this, hey, you bankly bank, you sold me a lemon and all this. So I just didn't like that. So I'm like, what can I do? You know, I'm, uh, 30, 38 years old at that time. And I went, I really want to do, do something, do something more uh, dynamic where I can affect more people. That's where insurance came in because I was like either insurance, real estate, which I'm getting into real estate as well, but that's down the road and we can get into that as well. But insurance, notary, uh, taxes, something I can be get a proficiency and show my proficiency and then market myself and, and go from there. That's what I was looking, looking at. And the reason why I like insurance is it is a necessary uh, requirement in most in most instances. And car, you don't really need a car. You can get a ride. You can uh, walk, etc. You know, debt. A lot of people don't pay their debt, so unfortunately. But hey, that's a, what you don't have to pay your debt if you don't want to, unless they do other little. Uh, tools uh, to get the, those uh, forfeitures, and when I was in, in in this environment, I was able to have the same type of conversations that I was having in the uh, two previous industries, but the, con uh, the the dialogue was different. Instead of um, enforcing something on behalf of uh, with uh, the uh, with the collections and I'm trying to pull not pull the wool but a facade with uh, insurance I mean with uh, with uh, car sales with insurance you can't do any of that you have to be efficient proficient and transparent as, as best as you can okay and that that goes across any person that's in this industry. Same goes with real estate, notary, etc. Any, anything that your uh, fiduciary responsibility, a fiduciary responsible for somebody's information, and you got to be compliant. And that should be go with anything where you're working in food service, whether you're and genital uh, genital services, you should want to do this. You should want to be compliant. You should want to do this as best you can. Just think, if everyone did everything is as efficiently as possible, how effective and efficient this environment would be. Like, if if everyone recycled, because not apparently no one sees that bunch of floating trash that's said some that's floating right out in the forget what body of water it's in but yeah there's a bunch of trash that's floating everywhere and yeah it's from people not recycling so if everyone recycled just imagine so we get to this this process why are we reading okay I to explain why we're reading. You want to have an understanding of what you're signing. Also, you want to know more about me, okay? 
I'm the type of person, if I cannot resonate with the client, I'm going to do whatever I can to resonate with them. And if I can't, I'm going to seek the knowledge in the outside uh, entity. And if all else fails, I will pass it along. I'm not a hater. Uh, and I really want to work with people. And I know for a fact that I'm not going to be able to work with everyone. Some people might really like the people that they're with, and that's fine. And I'm going for a specific type of person, a person who sees the value in me and sees that I'm going to do exactly what I say and exemplify exactly what I say and have a good relationship that can be developed and prosperous for everyone. That's exactly what I'm trying to get at. So when we're talking about trees and all this other stuff, there's a bigger point to that. And I really wanted to, uh, to impress upon you that. So the, about this book, it's How to Build a Fire and Other Handy Things Your Grandfather Knew uh, by Aaron uh, Briar or Briard, Briard or Briard. And it's a composite collection of all these grandfathers who feel like they want to impart wisdom. And I'm thinking about what is the best asset I can give somebody for free? Knowledge. And I did not know how to build a fire appropriately. I've done things that, oh, just throw some gasoline on there back in the day. So I read it. Now I know how to do it. And I'm going to follow along and I'm just going to read it. So here we are. Staying warm. We used to go camping when I was a boy. We used to put a lean into our packs and head out and live off the country for three or four days. If you spend a night in the woods and you don't know how to build a fire, you're going to be very cold. Bill Holloman. How to build a fire. Step one. Find a good spot. Looking for a clearing, one that's far away from houses, trees, roots, overhangings, branches, and also sheltered from the wind. Then clear a circle about three feet across, brush or dig out the center so it's slightly concave and place big dry rocks around the edge. Step two, gather your supplies, matches, tinder, twigs, dry grasses, and leaves, newspapers, and so on. Kindling, small sticks, about the size of your wrist, well, smaller than your wrist, rather. Uh, two or three dry splits, seasoned logs about 12 to 18 inches long, and a pair and a pail of water or sand or, or dirt for safety. Step three build a teepee shaped blaze. I don't know what the heck that is. Just toss tinder into the center, leaving space for oxygen to circulate around it. Stand your smallest pieces of kindling on an end to form a pyramid over your tinder. Repeat with three or four larger pieces of kindling. Then without knocking over the whole thing, well not without knocking the whole thing over, hold your breath and very gently lean a couple of logs on top. Exhale. Step four. 
Strike a match, light your tinder, and watch it all go up in flames, just as you hoped. Once the fire really gets growing, the logs will topple over the hot coals to keep burning. Add more logs as needed, being careful you do not smother the flames. Step five, get out your s'mores fixing and let the ghost stories begin. Did you hear the one about the guy with the hook over hook for a hand? Did you hear about the one guy with the hook for a hand? What about the girl with a ribbon around her neck? Come to think of it, who is standing behind that tree? Oh, so are you supposed to? See, I'm not an actor. Um, I'm just trying. <laughs> I'm just reading this as we go. So these are more handy tips. If there, if there's not a lot of tinder around, you might have to get creative. Try dried pine needles, pieces of papery birch bark, a fallen bird's nest pulled apart, so they want you get, they don't want you going in trees and, you know, doing things to live birds and their their babies and things like that. So, okay, or even the fluff from a cattail. A man, that kind that grows in the wetlands, not the kind that is connected to your neighbor's kitty. Pine pitch or sap will always light even on wet days. So will cotton ball swabs with Vaseline. You know, actually, uh, birch, birch tree wool will light wet as well. To identify good fire logs, knock two together if you hear a clunk, they're ready to burn. If you hear a thud, they're probably uh, still too wet to do anything but smoke you out. You do not want to light wet wood. Like, that's the worst thing. Like, if you don't uh, get along with someone that you live next door to, yeah, that might be something you want to do to be passive aggressive, but yeah, that's a no no. Never. Uh, Build your fire on top of rocks and never toss rocks into it. Hot rocks can explode, possibly cause a harm to anyone nearby. Yeah, I did that before thinking I could put rocks in a little fire pit and I could leave them warm to cook something. And yeah, that, that happened to me. The bricks exploded. Never leave an unattended uh, fire burning. Always, always put it out. Always use water, sand, or dirt. Always put it out. Using water, sand, or dirt. Water, sand, or dirt. Make sure I remember that because I've used things that were not these uh, three items. To prevent your matches from getting wet, dip their tips in wax and store them in an empty film canister. That's very needful. No matches. Build a fire, a fire plow. Find a piece of soft wood about a foot or two long and very hard pointy stick and a very hard pointy stick about a foot long. Rub the point of your stick along the grain of the soft wood until you form until you form a groove. Then you will cease dust collecting. I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine this and read it at the same time. That's the one thing. When you're reading something you're mentally, you're zooming through it. And then when you're reading out loud and you're conscientious of other people looking at you it just happens like that and no I don't do a whole bunch of takes I just do this and I'm just try to be as proficient as possible everyone makes mistakes it happens uh, touch it to your tender and, and agitate your blaze it may not be the quickest way to start a fire but it sure beats freezing you're no what, what? 
sure beats freezing your your know what off. It may not be the quickest way to start a fire, but it sure beats freezing your know what off. There are a lot of languages in here that I'm trying to paraphrase for, and I'm not accustomed to saying it like that, especially for the first time. You know, when you read a book, it's in their diction. Yes, English. Yes, concise. But it's in their diction nonetheless. So when you, anyone's going to stumble over something if, for the first time when they're reading something. So I wanted to show, share this with you in all of my humility. I am not a conceited person, but I'm very confident and very capable. So find something that you enjoy and be joyful to the people that want to be around you. Have a good day.